booktube. I am a Rebecca without my Sarah, and today I'm talking about my April wrap-up. Now, like in mid-May. I didn't have a phenomenal reading month in April. That's fine. I'd like to say May is going better, but... I read six books in April, which kind of sounds like a lot, but honestly, most of them were audiobooks. And if it weren't for audiobooks, I would have gotten through two. Actually, you remember my old giant tome topple TBR? Yeah. No. The first book I finished in April is All the Light You Cannot See by Anthony. Oh my god, I didn't look up his last name. Is it Dower? Dewer? Dewer? Shit. It took me like a month to get through. I listened to the audiobook mostly. The audiobook was great. It was devastating. <laughs> this is a World War II novel. We're following uh, Mari Lore and Werner. Mari Lore is a girl who lives in France. She is blind. Werner is this really intelligent German boy who like deconstructs radios and his like intelligence gets to the attention of like the Nazis, I guess. And he ends up going to this school for young German boys. And we're following them. We're also flashing forward to when the two of them are in the same city and it's being bombed and it's towards the end of the war. Uh, I mean, as expected, it was devastating. I had to go in the bathroom at work to cry. I did really like it. The book kind of pitches like a romance, I guess, between Mario Lore and Werner. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, that's it's really not like a big thing in the book. So this is not a romance novel by any means. And it's very good. It's very devastating. It came out years ago. So I feel like if you're interested in historical fiction, you probably already read it. If not, go ahead, I guess. Next up, I decided to read another Roxanne Gay novel and they had Not That Bad uh, at the library. So I listened to this. It's an anthology of short stories, which I normally don't like, but this was nonfiction. I think that made me like it a little bit more. These are all just stories that people, mostly women, but not all women, uh, have just about rape culture. It's obviously hard to get through, but all of the authors read their own story. So it was just, it was so great to just get the author's voice. I love this for a lot of reasons. I love that it wasn't just stories from cisgendered women. I love how the stories really varied a little bit. There was a story that was about catcalling and then there are really graphic rape stories and these are held in this same eye of like this is all a problem and they're connected. I would say the last story, I was trying to find the author of it but I don't have the book, I don't have the audiobook, but I found it the most relatable, absolutely. She talked so much about being young and having this idea of what sex was supposed to be like, putting her own wants and pleasure behind the idea that she was supposed to be giving her boyfriend pleasure. I feel like a, a lot of people do and I especially feel like a lot of, uh, you know, women who hook up with cis men do. The, you know, they, we have this idea that they, their desire for us is like what we want and if we want them to say that we're good at this, we have to think about only their needs and not care about ours. And that's what you want. You want like your boyfriend to tell all his guy friends how good his girlfriend is in bed, right? Yeah, I found that relatable <laughs> and sad. And overall, I, I really loved the anthology. It's made me kind of sit down and think about my own thoughts about sex and how I've approached it and just my own difficult experiences. Obviously a lot of trigger warning for assault, so it's a difficult listen, it's a difficult read I'm sure, but it was really phenomenal. Next up I read Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. This was like a short thriller. This is about a woman who's in a coma. Some of it is told while she's in the coma and she's laying there trying to remember what happened to her and then we're getting like bits of her past of how she's in this coma. It's, it's good. It was dark, obviously. It was, a lot, it was like a good domestic thriller, which I like. It was short, which I also really like. I will say, this was a book that had some twists that I didn't really see coming, but I, I, it could have done 
ending a little bit sooner for me. I kind of feel like this about a lot of episodes of Black Mirror. I really like, I like the idea of Black Mirror more than I like Black Mirror, but I, I like always find myself wishing like that the Black Mirror episode ended like four minutes earlier or something like that. Or sometimes even like a minute. Like if they always just like throw another little like twist or loop at the end to like be like, whoa, you didn't see that coming. You didn't see that one, did you? I bet you you didn't see that one. Tori was so much better before. So I, I did overall like it. I liked trying to figure out who these people were and how they were connected to each other. And it was, it was good, but I think it could have been four pages less. Next up, I listened to Sadie by Courtney Summers. I'd heard that this audiobook was great because part of it is in podcast form and hot damn, they were all fucking right. Everyone told me that was so right. So part of Sadie is this like a uh, podcast, it's like mystery podcast, and the guy in it is talking about how he was investigating this disappearance of this young woman, Sadie, who went missing shortly after her younger sister was like brutally murdered. And so we're getting that podcast and at the same time we're also getting points of view from Sadie and where she ended up and where she went and what happened to her. It was so good. I really liked this novel. I was so afraid it was going to take... So, okay, let me see if I can like phrase this in the best way possible without giving massive spoilers. But I guess if you like really don't want to know anything about Sadie, just skip ahead to when I get rid of the picture of Sadie. So I enjoy revenge stories in a way, and that's kind of what this is. Um, very quickly you realize that Sadie wants to avenge her sister. I enjoy that, but I often don't like how this is wrapped up in a lot of novels. A lot of books and TV shows and movies wrap this up as like, but revenge isn't really what you want, is it? And like, I get it, okay? <laughs> like, I understand. If someone brutally murdered my sister and I went out and hunted the killer, I wouldn't feel better killing the killer. But I really want to just read a story that gives me the satisfaction of them getting what's coming to them. I guess it's like, I just, I kind of want these like, dark stories about people getting revenge and then being like, fuck yeah, that's what I fucking came here to do. Fuck you. And I, ugh, like I want that. And I was so worried, and I'm not going to tell you how it goes either way, but I was so worried about Sadie being like, oh, but revenge isn't really good, is it? But I feel like they handled Sadie questioning whether or not she could do this and how it would make her feel very well in a very realistic way, I still found myself sitting there like, Sadie, just who cares? Just fucking kill him. Which I know is wrong because she's like a 19 year old and I should be rooting for her to go to therapy. Next I finally read Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. I had planned to read this for Tom Topple, but I was actually pretty sure I wasn't going to because I'm a failure. And then Yvette at Book Cave reached out to me and she's like, hey, we kind of talked about buddy reading Fingersmith. Would you like to buddy read this to me? And I was like, fuck yeah, I would. We had so much fun reading this together. It was just nice to, I feel like I haven't really done a buddy read where I'm just buddy reading it with one person and we can kind of like reach out to each other when we hit certain chapters and stuff like that. I've done mostly group buddy reads and those are fun, but I really enjoyed like buddy reading with just one person. That was really cool. This is about a young woman who is aiding a shady fella called Gentleman. They want to con a rich woman out of her inheritance. If you don't want to know too much about this plot going in. I feel like I already had known a little bit more than I'd wanted to, but overall like, wow, what a fun ride. And Stu and Maude are delightful disasters and I love them. The last book I read was also a buddy read. And it was Lilith's Brood by Octavia E. Butler. And but my God, Fingersmith Smith and Lilith's Brood were books that I wanted to read in 2019. So I'm really excited. So I was like starting this or thinking about starting this. And then Priscilla at Bookie Cave reached out and was like, do you want to buddy read this? By the way, you got and Priscilla are sisters and it's hilarious that I was buddy reading two totally different books simultaneously. <laughs> So I was reading this and Fingersmith at the same time. And I gotta tell you, that experience was fucking bananas. So Lilith's Brood is about a woman named Lilith who wakes up and she is on an alien spaceship and the aliens, the Uncali is what I call, we're calling them in my head. I don't know, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce everything in this, but the Uncali tell her, Earth's been basically destroyed. We saved as many humans as we can. 
we're rebuilding Earth and we will bring, we will put you back on Earth, but in exchange, we want to merge DNA with you. And this is three novels in one and it's following generations <laughs> of, oh, I got so angry by the end of this novel sitting there i kept flashing back to this class i took in college and the class was called the science and science fiction and we read a lot of like classic science fiction stories other random science fiction stories watched a lot of science fiction films it made me really realize that all of the shit that we talked about was written by old white men and i feel like i shouldn't be shocked to sit and think about this and realize that but man i'm so pissed i'm pissed that like if i were to go up to like a lot of like dumbass white boys I know who say they love science fiction and ask them about Octavia E. Butler, they'd be like, who the fuck are you talking about? And it's, oh, it's so taxing. She created an entire species that is just so unique and different. And then she created more and thought about how they would merge with humans and what that would do to both sides of them. And it was so well done. Tavia E. Butler has a very cold way of writing. And I just mean she's very straightforward, which I normally like. In this case, it made it kind of difficult sometimes because there's a lot of talk about humans and how violent we are. And there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of talk about rape. And I, so I would say there's a contact warning for rape. There's no like, descriptive rape scenes but there are characters who are beaten who are raped and the alien species she has come up with are very i don't want to say indifferent to it but they don't take it as seriously as like murder to them like oh murder is very bad but sexually assaulting someone is like well that's not good but like they don't oh it's like so hard to explain so and octavia e. butler does not put her emotions into the writing of this and it makes it such a surreal experience that you're just getting this very factual long journey through all of these characters who are eventually become like another species and oh it's just so bizarre the la i love talking to priscilla about this i'm so glad i buddy read this with somebody because we the last book in particular is so strange and she made a point and she's like don't you feel like you're reading from the point of view of like a stalker and I was like I, I guess <laughs> I didn't think about that but kind of yeah I like that she kept her emotion out of it but at the same time sometimes I was like you need to tell me how to feel about this because I'm so conflicted and I feel so weird ultimately there's not like a lot of good guys and bad guys in this everyone is in this like gray space of we're not not everything we're doing is totally right and it's so strange it's such a great experience if you're interested in science fiction please read this if you haven't already i'm so excited to read more of octavia e butler and yeah overall my experience was was kind of mixed i really loved it but i was so conflicted with certain things in it. And I think that that's definitely intentional. I mean, it's a masterpiece if I were to describe it as anything, like it was masterfully done. And it, she did something with aliens that I've always wanted to see done, where they're not just like coming to the planet to destroy everything, they want to create. And I kind of always, I like, I love stories about aliens. I like movies about aliens, but it's usually like destruction. It's usually like annihilation stuff and I, that's not what I want to see. I wanted to see like aliens who came to Earth and didn't want to eliminate us and how we would react to that and what would happen. To me, that's a more interesting story. Not that I don't like Independence Day style because that's still fun, but yeah, this is more interesting. I actually don't think I'm going to be doing TBRs anymore. At least for a time, we'll see. I might do TBRs for readathons, but I don't think I'm going to do monthly TBRs. I've been so weird about it i don't know let me know what you read in april let me know what you really loved let me know what you've read in may because now may is like halfway over <laughs> join me next time when i'm rambling about something else i guess maybe it'll be coherent